Hey Energizer, Spencer Jones here with another episode of the Jones and Four Show, your show that's going to help you live your life to the max, right? To be energized, to get the energy from the world, from you, and share it out. So are you ready? Are you ready to feel energized? Are you ready to take life by the horns and live it to the max? If you are, keep listening because this episode, this episode's freaking awesome. And it's a topic well, you probably already noticed the topic name of it, right? But it's a topic that we don't talk about overly. And I think we need to. We need to talk about it. So let's dive in, shall we? Today's topic, right? The name of the episode, self-hate. Let that sink in for just, just a little bit. Self-hate. Not self-love, not self-respect, nope, self-hate. How many times have you beat yourself up mentally, maybe physically? How many times have you looked in the mirror and not liked the reflection, not like the person who was looking back at you? That inner critic, that inner bully, as Sean Douglas says, right? Beating you up, telling you you're not worthy, you're not enough, who are you? All that self-hate. This is a crazy world we live in, and uh, we have become very aware of hate speech, hate actions, um, thoughts, all that stuff, right? Towards other people. Towards other people, I hate this group because of this reason. I hate this because of X, Y, Z, right? Hate is being spread. And we need to change that. We need to change how we do all that stuff. But that's not what this podcast is about. This podcast, this show is about you. About you helping yourself. Because many times we are beating ourselves up. We struggle with it because we hate ourselves. We dislike who we are. And I'll tell you from a personal standpoint, I hated myself. Freaking hated myself. I could not stand the reflection. I looked in the mirror. I wanted to change it. I just wanted to change myself, change who I was. And I couldn't do it fast enough. Because I was ashamed I had guilt, I was mad, frustrated, not at the world, but at myself. All right? This is this was the darkest of dark moments for me when suicide was an option. When just not being here, not being alive and, and hushing that inner critic. That would have been good. That would have been nice. Now, thank God I didn't commit suicide. Thank God I didn't go down that road. And instead, I chose the other way to silence those voices, to hush them, to hush that inner bully. And that is to work on me, to work on myself, to take that self-hate, that hate that I noticed, and to stop it and turn it around I know, right? We're only four minutes in. We got really dark, really quick. But sometimes that's a place where we live. Sometimes we live in that dark place. Sometimes we visit it. So if you're living in that, if you are are there in the moment or you, you visit it occasionally, make sure you pay attention to this. Write down a couple of notes and take action. Because let me tell you, Life gets so much better, so much better once you are out of that dark place, once you're out from that valley. It gets so much better. And you, you should be there with me. I want you there with me. You deserve it. You truly do. So let's get you there. And... I will say this before we jump in. If you know someone who is struggling, 
who's having self-hate issues, right? They're hating themselves. They're beating themselves up. They're in that dark place. Share this episode with them out of love, out of respect, and say, hey, I see you're struggling. Know that I'm here for you, if you are. You know, if you are comfortable to be there for them. And, uh, and here's some advice from a person who's been there. You got this, okay? They got this. So let's dive in. In today's world, a word or words that we spread a lot, that we share a lot, myself included, is the, the phrase, I should say phrase, not words, is a phrase self-love. You know, practice self-love, you know, um, give, recharge your batteries, do the things that make you happy, you know, give yourself that break, self-love. And I am all for it, 100% for it, right? Take that time for you, right? Recharge your batteries. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's chasing your passion. Maybe it's prayer, whatever it is. But t take time to make sure you're okay, right? To charge your batteries, to to be ready to go, to have, to be full so that you can share your light with the world, right? So take time to make sure your light's shining bright and then share. Yeah, and that's great. We should all take that time. But when you're in that dark moment, when you are hating yourself, that moment, that self-love moment is so far out of reach. It seems like the, it seems like it's an outer space. It's so far. You can't reach it. I get it. I felt it. So let's help you move there so that self-love becomes attainable. Because it is. And it's worth it. Oh my God, is it worth it? But sometimes it feels out of reach. So let's bring it closer. Let's sort of lasso around it. Bring it closer to you and you out of that depth. So let's jump in. I already said jumped in like three times. We're already in it. Like, I don't know why we're, we're just jumping in deeper, I guess. I guess that's what we're doing. It works. I apologize. But let's let's talk about those the strategies we can help you out. So I have five, specifically five strategies that can help you resolve that self-hate to, to wash it away and bring you more into that self-love so you're ready for it the first thing is to be aware the first step is to be aware of the thoughts you're saying the feelings you're feeling about yourself what are what are the things you're telling yourself what's the story you're telling yourself is it a story of i'm not worthy i'm crap i'm junk i messed up i'm blah 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 right all that negative crap or is it one saying yeah you made mistakes Okay, forgive yourself, learn from them, and let's keep going forward so we can work to improve and be better. Is it a story of uh, just constantly being beaten down and saying you're not worthy? Or is it saying you've been through struggles, but you've overcome? You're a hero. Because you are a hero. Right? So be aware of the stories you're telling yourself, of the words you use. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Putting qualifiers on what you're saying. Think about those. Be aware of the thoughts you're thinking, the words you're saying. And then when you are aware of those things and something comes up, all of a sudden you go, well, you messed up. You don't deserve this, 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 or that, right? Ask yourself, is it true? Do I really not deserve it? Am I really not worthy? Am I really not enough? Many times when we dig in, we ask ourselves those questions, we realize that you're being really hard on yourself. It's almost like, you're, you, would you say that stuff to a friend of yours or to you know, your, your best friend? Would you say that to them? Most likely not. We are so much harder on ourselves than we are with other people. So ask yourself when those thoughts, those words come into your brain, right? Into your, your head, ask yourself, is it true? And I'll tell you from my experience, many times I say, 
no, that's not true. Or, I will say this, or, yeah, I messed up. But I learned from it. Because guess what? We are all human. All humans make mistakes. Heck, probably aliens make mistakes. I don't know. Haven't met one. But we all make mistakes. Learn from it, grow from it, and then take that forward as part of this journey. Sometimes it's a really crappy part of the journey, but it's part of the journey if you learn and grow. So ask yourself if it's true. Many times it's not. Many times you are worthy. You do deserve it. You are always enough regardless. All right? And at times, if, you, if you're really hard and you're really in the depth, you say, yeah, I messed up. But I've learned I've grown. I'm getting better. I'm improving. You're taking those baby steps up. Remember to offer yourself grace. Offer yourself compassion. And this is what I was tying in before, right? When you say, okay, I messed up, but I'm learning. You're offering yourself some love for yourself, right? And I'm not talking the, the whole self-love practices, but enough where you're saying to yourself, you messed up, it's okay. We're going to figure this out, right? Offer yourself that grace, that compassion to be like, all humans messed up. They all mess up. They can either stay there or they can grow from it. You're choosing to grow. Right, so think about that. Offer yourself love. So first you're aware of it. You ask if it's true then. And then you offer yourself grace. And, you know, sometimes offering yourself grace is really freaking hard. Really hard to do. And sometimes you just can't do it. You can't. In that moment in time, you cannot offer yourself grace. Because you, you're just hurt so much. You hate yourself so much. So when that happens, you think of other people who might offer you grace. It could be God, if you believe in God. I bet you the Dalai Lama would give you grace, right? I would give you grace. Hopefully you can see yourself into giving yourself grace. It's tricky though. And if it doesn't happen, don't beat yourself up over it. It'll come. Okay? But try to offer yourself that love. And then the next strategy after all this stuff, the next part is to start pulling those weeds in your backyard. So many times we are in this valley, in this dark spot, because we have guilt, we're ashamed, we're frustrated, we're angry, we don't think we can go on. We have a lot of demons, we have a lot of skeletons in our closet, we, we have a lot of weeds in our backyard, right? And I love the weeds analogy. So we have a lot of weeds in our backyard, right? It's, they're dead, or they're nasty, they're gross, we don't want them in our backyard. Those are all the negative thoughts, all the things that are breeding the self-hate. And we need to pull it. We need to pull those weeds. But you got to get your hands dirty. You just can't take the weed whacker and, and knock it down. Because guess what? Then they come back. Sometimes they come back even stronger. Right? The weed whacker would be ignoring it. Saying, nope, I don't have that. And I'm just ignoring it and moving on. That's a weed whacker approach. And that doesn't work. It may make you feel better for a little bit. But it doesn't solve the issue long term. If you want to solve it, if you want to get rid of those weeds permanently, you have to dig them up, get them by the roots, and throw them out. Then we have, then we can plant seeds of beautiful things in your backyard. So how do you figure out the roots of the weeds, right? So you go to that problem, the thing that that's really gnawing at you. You go to that, and you ask, where does this come from? Okay, it comes from this. Then, then be a scientist, be curious. What can I learn? How can I grow from this? Where does that self-hate stem from, from this? Where does that belief come from? Is it from my parents? Was it from society? Is it self-imposed? Where does this come from? And then you could say, does it, or is it true? Do I believe in this? 
right? For me, I just felt like I needed to prove myself. One of the things, one of the weeds I had in my backyard was that I needed to prove myself. So I let my ego drive me, all right? And it all stemmed, this is one really nasty weed that spread like wildfire. But the main root of it came down to always feeling like I needed to prove myself. And I didn't. I don't need to. So then I changed that weed. I counteracted. I pulled it. I realized what it was. All of a sudden I saw the roots. I said, I don't need this anymore. I don't need to prove myself. So I pulled it. Instead, I planted a seed of, you know, a beautiful flower, which is an affirmation. And that affirmation for me is I am enough. I am enough. Now your seeds, those flowers, don't have to be an affirmation. They could be a belief. They could be other things, right? This, that Beautiful or whatever. Whatever you choose, right? Affirmations are great. Great ways to start. But that's what I needed. So I took that root, that belief, and then I turned it around. That's what I planted then, is I put the positive on it. Not the negative, the positive. And I planted that. And then I watered it, right? I let it get the sun. And by doing that, it was by, by practicing it, reminding myself of that, working at living it. That's how I watered it and let it grow. Okay? And then... Then you start doing the self-love. Then you start doing that self-compassion, self-love things as you're getting closer to it. Because now, and it's not an overnight process. It's not, oh, I did this for five minutes. No. This takes time. It takes time to dig deep to get your hands dirty with those weeds. But you need to go down to the root of that self-hate and ask yourself if it's true. Offer yourself grace. And you offer yourself grace kind of is over this whole thing, to be honest. Pull that weed, plant the beauty. And while that you plant it, that's the first step of that self love and watering it. You know, doing that, reminding yourself of, yet, of that love, of that beauty that you have and you are. That's practicing that self love. Then you could, then you could start building it up and do these other things to recharge your batteries. Many people talk about self-love. We don't talk about self-hate. It's scary. We just want to do the happy, yay, go me, look, I, I did stuff I love and I feel a little recharged. But you still probably have that darkness inside. That valley inside. And if you're just piling the good on top of that, you're not building that positiveness on solid ground. Pull those weeds. Plant the beauty. Let's talk about self-hate so we can get to self-love. And I will say this as we wrap up our episode. If you are struggling right now with whatever, if you are in a dark place, you do the work, but also see people who can help you. See a therapist, right? They're there, they're trained, they can help guide you. Surround yourself with people, with friends and family who are there to lift you up and support you. You don't need many. Two, one, two or three good friends can make all the difference. And then having that therapist there, a counselor there to help you and guide you, wow, that's it, it could it launches your success, launches your ability to heal, to move from that self-hate to self-love. So go see one if you need. Okay, that's going to finish it for this episode, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here, listening to this or watching this and dealing with a, t with a tough subject like self-hate. It's hard. I would love to know your story. I would love to know how you are working on overcoming self-hate or have overcome it. Share it out. Share it with me. Send me a message, right? Spencer at spencermjones.com. Or if you want to share it with the world, it can inspire others. Share it out on social media. And if you do me a favor, share this episode again with someone who might need to hear it. Because you might be able to change the world around just by sharing this episode. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Remember, you're an energizer. 
hit like, hit subscribe so we can energize this show, our Jones and Four show, to share it with even more people. All right, thank you so much. Remember, you are amazing. You are enough. And I can't wait to see you in our next episode. So until then, I'll catch you all later. Hey, I'm really sorry to butt in like this, but I know you're gonna love this and I'm too, too excited to not share it with you right now. And that is Spencer's Energy Hub. Yeah, that's right, Spencer's Energy Hub. It is a community. It's the Jones and Four community. You're listening to the Jones and Four show or watching it, right? And now there's a community designed for you to have success. We want you to live your life to the max and we can help you. We can help you do that through the tips, techniques, and strategies we share in this show, but also within this energy hub. So what is it? Well, it is a membership crew that's a family, right? We are a community who are there to support you, be in your corner when times get tough and when times are awesome. But there's more. You get weekly trainings. You get help, strategies, and, and ways to help you actually implement what you learn to have success so you can live your life to the max. Oh, and there's monthly interviews with experts and masters in their field sharing their knowledge with all of you so you can really take it, implement it, and have success in your life and go up that mountain faster and better than you could have before. You're here now, which is awesome. Now, take it to the next level and join us at Spencer's Energy Hub. Go there and find out what it all entails and all that and sign up to join uh, just go to spencersenergyhub.com or spencermjones.com. You can find it there and click on it and make sure you check it out and join us in the hub. Can't wait to see you inside.